Off the Hook, airing on OffTheHookSports.com. Your home for real news, real opinions, and what really matters about Tennessee athletics. The Off the Hook podcast at OffTheHookSports.com or Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, or wherever you go for your favorite podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, iHeart. Like, share, follow, subscribe. Off the Hook with Dave Hooker starts now. With Chris Landry, I'm Dave Hooker. It's Chalk Talk. We're going to break down Tennessee's newest commitment, and it's brought to you by The Mattress Place. Please subscribe and like this video so we show up more in your feed more often. And Chris is great with breaking down current college players, current NFL players, and prospects as well. Go to LandryFootball.com to learn more. LandryFootball.com. And it's brought to you by The Mattress Place. I want to tell you more about those fine folks here in just one moment. But uh, first, Chris, Tennessee picks up a commitment in Ricky Gibson, a three-star guy. But I've seen three-star guys get evaluated early, get offers early, and then they grow into four-star guys. Could This is me from afar taking a look at this, but could he be that type of guy? He could. Um, he's got pretty good length, uh, and he's got pretty good athleticism. Um, you know, he's a little undersized, can get bigger, get stronger, which he's going to need to. Um, I like his physical traits. I think he is, you know, not as polished. I think he reacts pretty well. And I think he has pretty good short area burst. Uh, but yeah, I think he can go into it. And look, let me just say this. Um, Tennessee at this stage as they're building a program is not going to go head to head with the Alabamas and the Georgias and get all the five stars. They're going to lose that battle. I mean, they will. I mean, they'll get a few and they've gotten some. We've talked about them right here, but a lot of it in recruiting is like you just alluded to finding that guy that may be a better player down the road. Now the, the negative part is, a commitment, you know, it doesn't mean that he won't flip it to Georgia or Alabama if they push hard on him down the road. That's that's a risk you take. But but you got to be first. You got to come after him. And I think this is one of those guys. So what what I want to get across here is this is a really good job, and this is not the first guy they've done this with that really fits pretty well and is maybe an up-and-comer that is a really good commitment and uh, now the key is to use the fact that we were the first we believed in you we've got a role for you we were there for you before and you hope that holds on to where in december it sticks because that's that's not the way it used to be as you well know true now he was, I'm, I'm told, offered by Arkansas, and that was a committable offer. Man, I hate that term. And that Georgia had offered him as well. I guess that's a little bit more uh, vague as, as to whether or not they were ready to accept his commitment. But with, with Gibson, I do think his, his stock will rise, um, and it brings Tennessee up to 20 commitments for the 2023 class. Now, with Gibson in particular, when you, you see him on tape, what type of potential do you see? For I, I'm not just talking about college or even the NFL maybe one day. I'm talking about just this upcoming season. How can he improve his game to, uh, to be an even better prospect than he is now? Yeah, I don't think he's an early starter, quite frankly, in, in, in college. I think he's got good length. As I said, he's about six feet, but he plays a little longer. 5'11", six feet, plays a little longer. He's like 164, 165. He's got to add weight. He's going to struggle, and he can play a, a lot of off, and I think um, press bail, but I think press coverage is not going to be something he's going to be real effective with early, but I think he has good ability to turn and run and cover. Uh, but he's going to have to get stronger. His weight room strength is going to have to be there, and that's where – I can look, and I see it a lot, and I don't know the kid very well, but he has the type of frame, and if he has the type of work ethic that you could be talking about a guy that's a six-foot, um, you know, 185, 190-pound corner in a couple of years that's got really good quickness, short area quickness, really good short area burst, and long speed. That's pretty good. So I think he has starting ability as an SEC corner, maybe not initially. 
Now, how strong can he get stronger without losing any of his quickness? You know, how quickly will he adapt? How committed will he be? All those things are you study and evaluate as a player um, in recruiting. And, and hopefully he's got that. If he does, then I think he can be uh, a really good, uh, really good contributor. Now, uh, he's expected to be a January enrollee. So I'll make the assumption he's going to stick with his commitment to Tennessee getting there in January. Um, certainly some things that that you can do to maybe enhance the chances of getting him to play early and getting him stronger. So it's going to be fun to watch because I think he's a, an intriguing kid. Chris Landry of LandryFootball.com joining us now on Chalk Talk, a production of Off Talk Sports, brought to you by The Mattress Place. The Mattress Place so close to downtown. Sometimes people hear Chapman Highway and they think that's a long ways away. No, how about two miles from Henley Street? That is The Mattress Place, and they are veteran and Marine Corps owned. They are A-plus accredited by the Better Business Bureau, over 225 five-star reviews on Google. So thank you for your service to the Mattress Place, and thank you for no gimmicks. just 30 to 70% off each and every day, the Mattress Place. Chris, as far as Tennessee's recruiting under Josh Heupel, last year I thought it was okay. This year I think it's kicked it up another notch. Other than, I'm going to kind of paint you into a box a little bit, other than the success on the field, has anything changed in prospects' minds, or is it as simple as that? Well, I think it's the biggest part. But the other thing is, you know, you can you can sell yourself and what you're going to do, but when you have something to <clears throat> display on film and people, players can see it, it's one thing. Two, when they come on campus, and that's usually the first step, to getting them to commit is to get them on campus and get them to see what the atmosphere is and to get to know the coaches. I think the, the other thing is Josh and his staff are becoming more known amongst the high school coaches and the, the prospects. So that word starts to get around good or bad, you know, the more you're ingrained in the program, the more people know what you're about. And I think again, once you're, kind of penetrate that then you get to the position where people say um i, I want to go take a visit there and then then you make a determine if it's the right fit and so I, I think that they're they're doing a nice job of again finding the right type of guys right now but we all know for tennessee to be if the if the expectation is going to be well because i'm sure you get this a bunch is well, when is Tennessee going to begin to challenge Georgia? And I'm not talking about, you know, winning a game, but when are they going to compete and beat Georgia in the East? Well, the answer is they're not. Unless Georgia comes back to the pack or Tennessee recruits, you know, a top three class, top four class in the country. Because if you're not recruiting at that level, uh, the only way you're going to catch them is if you're recruiting at a high level, but the coaching is poor. Well, the coaching is not. So Georgia is way ahead. And, uh, you know, probably in an area where it's going to have to be incremental improvements and patience. And we're going to have to see them recruit the, the guys that they can get, develop them well, and hope that it leads to more of the type of guys that Georgia and Alabama gets. Because in this case, you know, a, a, a kid, um, a, a Gibson is somebody that's, yeah, an offer, but that's not a prime guy for Georgia. He's a later guy, and, you know, that's that's where you have to go and get that guy and develop him and then turn around and say, well, look what we developed, and, you know, that leads to, to more and more of the top guys. So I think it's the familiarity with people with the staff and obviously the on-field success. That's, that's going to be a big part of it. You can sell it all you want. You don't win – does not do a whole lot. And I, I will say this, that uh, it's just something we haven't said in a lot in the past, but NIL is going to help or, or hurt every school. You know, you're either you're going to have a big advantage with NIL or you're going to be at a disadvantage. And I think Tennessee it appears like they're going to make that a big advantage for themselves. I think it's going to be a big advantage. I also wonder the NCAA investigations ongoing 
but they do have a notice of allegations and it does appear as if Tennessee did everything right it, from a recruiting standpoint only. Is that a dead issue or is it something that other recruiters still bring up about Tennessee? I know Aliyah Drinkwitz likes to bring it up on national <laughs> television, national radio. So are other people doing that in living rooms across the nation? Oh, I'm sure there are. Um, but here, here's what you do is you tell them, be honest with you. We don't expect it to be, and if this is what you believe, we don't expect it to be, you know, much of anything. I, here's my view on it. I don't know what the NCAA is going to do, but my, my expectation is, and I may be in the minority on this, I don't know. I don't think the implications are going to be really bad. I don't know that there's going to be many scholarships uh, reductions, and it's certainly not going to affect bowl games or anything like that. I, I don't. I think the way they handle it is going to make it, you know, um, not as bad as people think. But again, I don't know, and um, we shall see on that. I think you have to communicate that with players. They know about it, so if you don't bring it up, I think you need to bring it up and say, "Look, yeah, you know, I'm sure people because other people are going to bring it up as you're alluding to, and they are." then I think you need to talk to them. Look, this is kind of where we are. That happened before we were here. We handled it the right way. We are doing things well with, you know, with you know, the NIL and everything. And, and so we've, with new system, new regime, we've cleaned that up. That's what you sell. You don't sit there and say, well, you know, Jeremy Pruitt was a really good guy. And he really, you, gotta, you know, you just right. you leave that alone. You leave that alone. That's not us anymore. And we've handled it. We weren't responsible for it, but we handled it the right way, we believe. And we believe the NCAA, at least what we understand is they agree that we handled it the best way we could. So and you let it fall as it may. And if it turns out something bad happens, cause you could cause you to lose a kid then around. I mean, you, you don't ever know. But you just I think you gotta be honest and you gotta sell what you have to sell. I agree with that. By the way, Jeremy Pruitt doing quite well in the World Series of Poker, which, uh, yeah, he's. Are he's, you serious? Yes, he's. Is that, is that really happening? That, that you mean the stuff you see sometimes? Are there, and that's the, really happening. He's doing that. Yes. Oh that, God. I know. Now everybody's googling. He's Chris Landry. I'm Dave Hooker. Brought to you by the Mattress Place. We will talk to you next week.